The last important thing that patients always ask me and I think is important to discuss and patients want to know is I'm going to have a hip replacement. I'm 50 years old. What's the life expectancy of this implant? And the good news is that you can pretty assuredly tell patients that 10 years from the operation, 95 to 97 percent of these hips are performing well. And if you take those numbers and, and extrapolate them out to 20 years, about 90 percent of patients are going to be doing well with that implant at 20 years. So the numbers are quite good. At Hospital for Special Surgery, we believe it's very important to have data in terms of the quality of the care that we provide to our patients. From the time they enter the hospital, through the operation, and then afterwards, and they're followed up prospectively, who knows, maybe 20 years. Look at complications, look at success of various different implants, look at hospital stays, look at infection rates, look at any untoward event that can occur, and do it in a prospective way, so hopefully that information can be used to improve the quality of what happens to patients who come later on. We may find that an implant, a particular implant that is being used during that period of time is failing more frequently than another. So that kind of information is important in terms of modifying what implant we might use. Following total hip arthroplasty, the three precautions that we follow here are no hip flexion beyond 90 degrees, which means no sitting on any low chair or soft couch. Um, no crossing your legs. And then the last one is no internal rotation, so no turning your toes or your kneecap inward. Because the ball is smaller, intrinsically there is less stability in the system. Because if you get too much flexibility, theoretically it could dislocate. So that's why we really reinforce and make sure the patient is independent and has a full understanding of what the precautions are prior to discharge. But for the most part, soft tissues heal around this and the hip is very stable. The future really rests in a number of different areas. One is the prevention of failure of what we're currently doing. So we have a very active laboratory here looking at why implants fail. The second thing we're looking at is the biological changes that occur around an implant where it fixes itself into the bone. And because wear of these materials can occur, because of so many cycles of motion between that ball and the socket, that the body can respond in a negative fashion and it can stimulate the production of cells which in fact break the bone down around the device. We're interested here looking at biologically the cellular mechanisms involved in that process and how we might block that process from occurring. So I think in the future, some of you will have a hip replacement, they may take one tablet a day that would prevent that cell to form. And you're probably looking at maybe 20 to 25 years from today. Rather than put an implant in, we'll be able to resurface the joint biologically with growth of cartilage that either stop the arthritic process or once it occurs, treat it early to prevent it from becoming a severe problem.